This video will cover pass plays in EFHL core rules. Very quickly, here is the huddle. And coming up is the setup. We've already put up the offense here. This is a crazy formation. Quarterback is in shotgun on a stationary base. I've got two tight ends and a slot receiver. And both tight ends are eligible receivers because I've got the, uh, the wideouts off the line. Still a legal seven-man formation. This is clearly going to be a pass play. No running backs in the backfield, and the only back is the quarterback himself. And here's the defensive setup. Under normal circumstances, these safeties would be on stationary bases or would have their dials turn hard to the left or right to, to spin in circles and provide zone coverage. Uh, probably the linebacker as well, but, but we're not going to do that in this case. Uh, no shifts, no audibles. We're going to go straight into the snap here. Okay, at which point now we would do all our unblocked pivots. But before we do that, let's just go ahead and talk about the characteristics of a pass play. Different from handoffs, pitch outs, and laterals, and shovel passes as follows. Pass plays are generally a forward pass, although you can technically uh, uh, throw a backwards pass as well. Passing sticks should be used for any pass that's more than two vertical base links distance which also happens to be the same uh, distance as the defensive pressure stick, which I'll uh, measuring stick, which I'll explain in just a moment. Anything closer will be either a shovel pass if it's a forward pass or a pitch out or lateral if it's uh, a backwards pass. And of course, if it's in within one vertical base distance, it would be a handoff. Now, a quarterback can only make a forward pass if he is behind the line of scrimmage, which in this case would actually be the 35-yard line. The quarterback may only pass the ball to an eligible receiver. That includes running backs, which are not uh, present on this play. Those are all the uh, players in the backfield with the quarterback. Also, the wide receivers or wide outs, they're eligible for passes. A uh, slot receiver, as long as he's not on the line of scrimmage. Although he's actually outside the tackle, so he could be on the line if he wanted to. But uh, in that case, I'm pretty sure both these gentlemen would have to be off the line. And a tight end can be a receiver only if the wide out is, uh, has stepped back from the line. The tight out, the tight end, may only catch a pass if he's at the end. If he's, <laughs> This is hard to explain. If the wide receiver has dropped back into a flanker position when there's a tight end in play, the tight end may be an eligible receiver. Now, the center, the two guards, and the two tackles may not receive a pass. If for any reason they do catch a pass or the ball hits them, that's a penalty against the offense. So to review, the quarterback must be behind the line of scrimmage when he attempts a forward pass, and he can only pass to eligible receivers. Now, using this wideout as an example, a player that has fallen over cannot catch a pass. If he's knocked over by another figure or if he just falls over in the middle of the play, he cannot catch a forward pass or a backwards pass for that matter. He could possibly recover a fumble if the ball touches him at the uh, end of the ball drop. But you can't put him back on his base and uh, attempt to catch a pass in the EFHL. Furthermore, if a receiver goes out of bounds, like so... In order to legally catch a pass, he must reestablish himself fully in bounds prior to uh, catching the ball. That's straight out of the NFL rulebook. Okay, so we've defined what a forward pass is and the conditions that must be met to perform one. Now we need to define how to execute it. In the EFHL, we use passing sticks. However, you could adapt the rules to use a passing action figure. You would just need to take out one stoppage, which is the, the physical movement of the receiver toward the ball marker that I'll show you in just a moment. But now let's get back to the play here. I need to, I've already done the snap. I just need to do all the unblocked pivots, and I'll do that off camera. Okay, the defense has got the inside route here. This is going to be tough to make a pass to this wide out. Got some choices up here, possibly, and I've still got a a linebacker here that's going to have to pivot because he's blocking an eligible receiver. So there we go. The defense is expecting a Hail Mary. So uh, that's why they're all turned around. They're headed back to the end zone. Had they been smart, they would have had 
a cover seven or something ridiculous back here in the end zone anticipating a Hail Mary. But now we've done all unblocked pivots, let's go on to the read. All right, so as you can see, we've got two. Uh, this guy's out of bounds, so if he wants to catch a pass, we're going to have to uh, extend the play with a scramble. Uh, I'm going to do all my pivots off camera here. The pocket looks real nice. I don't even think that quarterback needs to move. So what I'm going to do is pivot this player so that he can get back in bounds. Um... Nice open field here, but two defenders there who could easily intercept this ball. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, these two gentlemen look like the best hope for a completion. However, I'm going to cut this pivot this guy this way. This may not be a long pass. So, uh, you know, I'm going to have to scramble. So let's bump the board for up to a half a second and see what develops. All right. At this point, now we'll do our pivots. I'll do that off camera. Now I've got a few options here for this pass play. Um, that may be my guy right there, and it's going to be kind of a short pass. This guy is well defended. I would not throw a pass here because, you know, that would be a very long pass, and I've got two... Uh, 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 defenders here probably wouldn't pass here too he's well covered as you can see and of course that pass would be impossible so you know either this gentleman or this gentleman are probably my best bets for a pass here so let me show you how to uh, measure this uh, we use the uh, long red and white measuring stick to determine whether the pass is going to be short medium or long yardage using the appropriate measuring stick to place the ball. So we'll measure this gentleman. This is going to be medium yardage. This, however, will be a long yardage pass. And at the same time, if you're using defensive pressure sticks, we would also measure to make sure none of the defenders are within range for defensive pressure, at which point you would use the longer passing sticks with the yellow tips on them, a little longer than the... Uh, medium yardage stick but that didn't apply in this scenario however uh, let's say this gentleman had been about right here you'd have had to use defensive pressure sticks now obviously we must pass the ball now because otherwise if we bump the board again he's going to hit this stationary quarterback which could actually be a roughing the passer penalty if we uh notice it but we're going to head and go ahead and try to make a pass to number 39 here and uh, we know that's medium yardage. So what we do is we put down the white measuring stick for medium yardage. And we uh, try to determine where we're going to place the angle. You know, these bases may drift to the left or right. Or they may make heart turns. Depending on how the base is tweaked. And the uh, how the dial is set. Now, all the dials are neutral on these figures right now. So... You know, normally I would consult my chart to see what his tendency is, but we're just going to assume he's going to make a little curve to the left here. All right. So now we've already done all the pivots, so there are no more pivots. That bears repeating. All pivots must be made prior to the pass, which is what's coming up. Prior to measuring the pass. This prevents the, you know, players from redirecting their angles after they see where the ball is going. They have to anticipate where that ball is going prior to the measurement and the placement of the ball marker. So all that's left now is to the offense to bump the board to see if this pass is complete or incomplete. And we'll go through three different scenarios here in just a moment. In fact, let's go ahead and do it now. I will go ahead and mark the position of the intended receiver. And we'll talk about three different scenarios that could occur. If when we turn the board on, he uh, touches the ball marker, that's a completed pass, at which point the ball carrier, who's now number 39, would pivot, only he would pivot, at which point the defense takes control of the board, bumps it for any length of time. You can turn it off even after a split second, at which point all unblocked players, except for the ball carrier, may be pivoted, then the defense turns on the board until the play is resolved. That is exactly like a run play after crossing the line of scrimmage. 
the only exception being on, on pass plays, all that business occurs at the moment of a completion. Now, if this figure does not touch the ball marker and goes more than one base length past the ball, that is an incomplete pass. Next down, the line of scrimmage remains what it was on the previous pass. If, let's see, this defender is on the 44-yard line, if I can remember that. If a defender touches the ball before or after, and I'll explain in a moment, the intended receiver, that's an interception. Now, if he touches the ball after the uh, intended receiver goes more than one vertical base length away from the ball marker, that's an incompletion. He, he does not intercept. The ball has already bounced and touched the ground. But, you know, from this distance, that's a clean interception. At which point, the player who just intercepted the ball may pivot. Now the offense bumps the switch for any amount of time, even a split second. And then all unblocked players pivot except for the ball carrier who just intercepted the ball. And the offense then turns on the switch until the play is resolved. It just flips everything around during an interception. Now, there's another scenario. If the offense and the defense touches this ball at the exact same time, you can see the ball mark in the middle there, that is a batted down ball, the same as an incompletion. And one other thing to uh, consider, if the defense prevents the offense from uh, touching this ball marker by physically diverting his path. Well, that wasn't a good example. You know, outside of one vertical base length distance from the ball marker, that's a penalty. That's pass interference, just like in the NFL. But by the same token, if the defense can intercept this ball, but the offense diverts the path of the uh, receiver prior to catching the ball, preventing him from touching that ball marker. That's offensive pass interference, so you need to watch for that as well. The exception, of course, being within one vertical base length distance from the ball marker, at which point all bets are off. You know, anything can happen. If you touch it from the side of base, that's not a completion. That's incomplete. And it must be front of base to count as a completion. But now let's go ahead and put all the pieces back where they were attempt to execute this play. So the pass has been made. Let's see if I can get this marker off the field without moving him too much. Okay. At this point, actually I've got his angle wrong now. There we go. At this point we'll just uh, bump the field, bump the motor to see if this pass is complete. It is. So, at this point, the ball carrier will pivot. He's not going to make it far, I don't think. But uh, remember, only he may pivot. So now the defense turns on the board. Okay, and now all unblocked players may pivot, including uh, the offense and the defense, but not the ball carrier. He has already pivoted, so I'll do that off camera. It's highly probable number 37 will make the tackle. So here we go. No, but let's see if he impedes forward progress. Yeah, yeah, okay, so the ball, we're going to say... The tackle was made at, at the 40-yard line. As you saw there, he didn't technically tackle in front of base. However, he did divert his forward progress. Sideways is fine, but as you can see, the ball carrier has started going backfield. His forward progress was impeded. What a great play. That, that actually turned out better than I thought it would because I set this up for the defense to uh, have a great coverage backfield. But we just decided to... You know, execute a real short pass. He got the first down. And that was a pretty good demonstration. Now, getting back to defensive pressure sticks, if a quarterback attempts a pass within the red zone, the 20-yard line to the end zone, uh, that always mandates the use of defensive pressure sticks if you're using them. And the reason for that is that it's terribly difficult to complete a pass within the red zone, much more difficult than in open field. So just remember to always use defensive pressure sticks if within the red zone, the 20-yard line. So let's go back and review. Uh, you can only uh, make a forward pass if the quarterback is behind the line of scrimmage. He can only make the passes to eligible receivers. We define that. 
if the intended receiver is more than two vertical base lengths away from the quarterback, that mandates the use of pressure sticks. In that case, the red short yardage pressure stick. But then uh, we would need to measure it with the measuring stick the further you go out. And if there's a defender within this, this distance of this orange measuring stick here, you would use the defensive pressure sticks rather than the regular pressure, uh, passing sticks. And you would also use the defensive pressure sticks if within the red zone when making the pass. Watch out for pass interference between the cornerback and the wide receiver. And also between tight ends and linebackers or safeties. You've got to flip those defenders around when, they're, when an eligible receiver is running downfield. You have to run with them. You can't block them. And finally, just keep in mind, the longer the pass, the more difficult the completion. That's why the pressure sticks, or the uh, passing sticks are so cool, in my opinion. It pads in the difficulty of the pass itself. So that's how passing works in the EFHL. Let me know if you have any questions. See you soon.